Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream, and I'm out in the garage because it's not a bad day out. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So we had some rain that came through, washed everything down pretty good, and I'm waiting for the grass to dry out. It's not going to happen today, uh, so I'm going to mow tomorrow. But I wanted to cover a topic that I started to actually cover on a video that Heidi and I was doing, and that's selling stuff. First thing you notice is I got my toolboxes kind of spread out here and <laughs> moved around to get the truck parked in here. Remember, I sold that lift table that was sitting here, and guess what? That truck does not fit. If I put the bumper against the wall, the front bumper, uh, the back end's hanging out just a little bit. <laughs> it's just too long, so all that for nothing so probably uh, this is going to get moved around a little bit more but it got me thinking about selling stuff and that's kind of what I want to talk about on this video but getting rid of some of my stuff because all of us that want to go full-time RVing uh, eventually we're going to have to downsize and it is a major pain and I talked about it in a previous video how we're most likely going to save the bulk of the stuff uh, for the final I don't know four months that we're going to move and actually get rid of the house and we'll do an estate sale at that point but again this is years down the road but in the meantime there's no reason that you can't sell stuff especially if it's bigger items that you know will sell individually so let me talk about selling things I'm gonna shoot from the hip here about some of the things that I do to get stuff sold so I might miss a few things or I might not cover it exactly the way that I wanted to but I want to tell you that selling things is nothing more than letting people see what they want to buy already. Let me tell you what I've done in the past. I used to have a small engine business that was mainly started to buy equipment uh, that was used at either auction or off of Craigslist or out of the paper. I mean, when I first started, it was back whenever we were doing it from the newspaper. And I would take the equipment, bring it home, refurbish it, make it the way it's supposed to be, and then sell it. The first year that I was in business out at this location, which was over 16 years ago, I moved 45 riding lawnmowers in just over four months. As fast as I could buy them and fix them and put them out there, they were being sold. A lot of that had to do with location, but a lot of it also had to do with pricing to sell and that's something I'll talk about here in a second too. I also over the years have bought and sold things primarily for my own use and then if I don't want it anymore or don't like it anymore I'll sell it. I used to buy and still do on occasion stuff to resell if I think it's a good enough deal and again that's something I'll bring up too as far as knowing the marketplace. I've sold cars many cars I've bought many cars over the years too motorcycles mopeds electronic equipment and of course outdoor power equipment in all shapes and sizes string trimmers chainsaws snow blowers rototillers whatever it may be I've pretty much bought and sold it so I have a lot of experience and you'll find that a lot of people kind of congregate around you at least from your family or immediate family whenever they find out that you've sold stuff on Craigslist and it's because a lot of people don't understand the whole process that's why I'm doing this video so you guys can basically learn what I know or how I sell the stuff and then you can apply your own techniques to whatever I'm telling you to help you along one of the things that I figured out kind of on my own but it should be pretty apparent looking back is that people just need to see the item that you have for sale it needs to be put out there it's like saying I want to win the lottery and I never play I would really like to sell that old car of mine that sits in the backyard but you never do anything with it sure you might tell some people or you might write down on a piece of paper a few tidbits about the car and post it on the local laundry mats bulletin board or the local grocery store or something like that which that's fine you can do those things too but add a picture just add a picture let somebody see it you can talk about it all day long but the most important thing is for them to see it the actual item that you're selling that's the most important thing out of anything that's more important 
than pricing it. That's more important than describing it. That's more important than anything other than how to get in contact with you. So two things there, make it to where people can see it and make sure the contact information is available to where you're able to talk with these people. To give you an idea of how important it is for people to see the item, there's an app that's currently out there, it's available, it's called LetGo, and I'm sure there's other ones too. But the LetGo app, I've been using it successfully for about the last four months, five months, and it works pretty well. That whole design of that LetGo app is to make it simple for people to get their stuff seen. All you have to do is register with them using your Facebook login or an email. And at that point, you can start selling stuff. And all you do is push a button that says, sell my stuff. And once you click that button, it wants you to take a picture or use a picture that you've already taken of the item. And once you've posted that picture, which again, very seamless, very easy to do, that picture could be available for sale right then. No price, no description, nothing. The app will try to add its own description if possible, but it will allow you to see if there's any interest. If people are genuinely interested in something, they just need to see the picture of it. So pictures are very important. One of the things that I notice a lot of people do as far as being a mistake is taking poor pictures. In this day and age, there is no reason to take a poor picture at all. If you don't have a quality phone, then find out what it takes to get a picture taken with a camera that has good qualities and then put it on your computer so you can add it at a later time. Or if you have friends that have really good phones, tell them, hey, can you come over and snap a couple shots of this item that I need to sell and send it to me in my email so I can post it online because photos tell the whole story. Now, as far as RVs are concerned, buying and selling RVs, or pretty much anything for that matter, make sure that you take good quality pictures and you take the maximum allowed to sell the item. You never know what the potential buyer might wanna see. So if I'm gonna sell, let's say our RV, I'm gonna take a picture of the front, the side, the back, and the other side. And then I might take a picture of a couple of other things outside, like the new tires, and maybe a close-up of the paint. And then we'll move inside the camper. And make sure you take your pictures in a sequence that makes sense. For example, into the front door, to the right if there's an area to your right, then to your left, then looking long ways down the camper. Start your walk down the camper. Take a picture halfway through. Take a picture to the left and the right of whatever might be of interest there and then in the back and then turn around and do a long shot of the front. You want to show as much as possible and you want to make it to where people can understand what they're looking at. A lot of times I see pictures of RVs that people are taking pictures just willy nilly. <laughs> I know you love that phrase. Whatever they want. The refrigerator, then they go outside and take a picture of the tires. And then they move back in and they take a picture of the couch. And then they go into the bathroom and take a picture in there. Then they might go to the bedroom. And then they go outside and show some more outdoor storage or an overall shot. It's confusing. People want to see step by step what they're looking at. They need to know what they're looking at. If you don't want to take your pictures that way, you need to put captions on those pictures explaining what they're looking at so they can understand. Keeping with RVs, it's really important for you to do that kind of shooting that I just mentioned so people can get an idea of what the floor plan's like. Unless you have a picture of the floor plan that you might be able to post, and I mean that's a PDF file that's available online of your RV. Um, if you don't have that, you're gonna have to kind of tell the story with your pictures. So pictures, pictures, pictures. That's definitely the most important thing. Now, second important, Contact. Make sure that it's a number that you can be reached at. You don't have to answer right away, but if you are going to let it go to a voicemail, make sure you put in your ad. Leave message. I will call back. Leave voicemail. I will call back. Something to that effect so these people don't think they're wasting their time. Every ad that I place, I make sure that I put leave message. I'll call back because there's a good chance I might not be able to pick up and I don't want them to feel like they're not going to get a call back. 
Now I'm going to tell you one of my secrets and that is you don't want to attract every person that's on the internet looking at product and the reason is is because a lot of people that's all they're doing and that's all they're ever going to do is just look even though they see a camper that really interests them they have not a penny in the bank and they have not a chance in the world that they're going to buy that thing they just want it they like what they see but they're sitting at home on the computer doing whatever they do all day long and they saw that item they saw your camper and it looks like a dream to them and then they start thinking wow wow that would be awesome great this is what is called in the industry <laughs> tire kickers these are people that have no interest whatsoever in the car that's where the industry really got the name tire kicker but they don't really have interest in what you have for sale they just want to check it out and look at it and talk about it maybe they had one in the past maybe they used to camp all the time whatever the reasons that stirred up feelings that's all you're going to get from them is their feelings on the matter they're not looking to buy so don't worry if people call and don't leave messages they weren't serious about it in the first place the other thing that I do is make sure that I post that I do not want text messages and I don't want emails and if the items for sale it's still being posted you have to make sure that you keep your postings up to date if you sell an item get rid of it don't leave it up there because what happens is you get the infamous is your item still for sale email if somebody says that I delete it if somebody sends me a text message I delete it if somebody sends me an email I delete it I don't care if the person has said I see that you're asking five thousand dollars for your car I want to give you five thousand dollars cash today give me a call delete because in my instructions it's very clear you leave a message on my phone if I don't pick up and I will call you back so if I get a text message or an email saying anything for that matter I don't do it and here's what happens there if those people are serious buyers they're gonna go back and read that ad again and say oh I see he said call and leave a message I'm going to call and leave a message so you don't have to deal with all the riffraff and deal with the people that are just kicking tires because there's a lot of them out there of course you gotta worry about all the scams that go on cash only no trades those are two things that should also be in your ad you don't want somebody talking about PayPal gift cards trading their Game Boy their Xbox their PlayStation for whatever you have because ultimately you're wanting to get cash for your item so you can go buy something now that doesn't mean you can't trade up and wheel and deal if you feel comfortable doing that but this is addressing the people that really don't sell that much stuff this video is to cover the basics and trading can be a tricky business because you have to know what the item is worth that you're getting and you have to make some sort of checklist do I want this item will I use this item or do I want to resell this item if I'm going to resell it how much is it worth what's the market on it will it sell relatively fast there's a lot of things to look at so just kind of avoid trades if you're just starting out and stick with cash only no checks no I'm from another country I'm from another state I'm gonna have my shipper pick it up just delete those emails don't even bother with them and if you get the guy on the phone just tell him no thanks and hang up it's not a big deal those people are being just as rude to you by wasting your time talking about some kind of a scheme that they want to set up as you hanging up on them so don't feel bad about that so we basically covered a couple of things take really good pictures of what you have for sale make sure that your contact information is pretty specific in its instructions and clearly spelled out so if you get any kind of other communication you know to ignore that now three you gotta know how to price your item you have to see what the markets like just because you paid eleven hundred dollars for something and you only used it two times doesn't mean it's worth eleven $1 hundred dollars it doesn't mean it's worth a thousand dollars it could mean potentially it's only worth seven hundred dollars there's a lot of things like that electronics lose their value really fast 
brand new items have a tendency to lose their value as soon as they go out the store. There are exceptions to that, but it's one of those things that you have to know what the market brings. So as far as pricing, everybody wants a great deal. Now you're going to have potentially callers coming through talking about a couple different things. One of them is going to be the low baller. So that's a term you need to know, low ball. And if you don't know it, all that means is this guy is trying to get this stuff off of me as cheap as he possibly can so he can relist it and sell it or resell it or put it in a store or take it to the local pawn shop, something like that. There are ways that people make money and they do pretty well just lowballing. So lowballing is nothing more than if I have, for example, I had this lift table for sale and I had it for $850. I had lowballers not only calling up that I talked to directly, but sending me text and emails, and you know how I feel about that, saying, I'll give you 300 cash, I'll come pick it up today. I'll give you 400 cash, I'll come pick it up today. You can just delete those things, just ignore them. If somebody calls up and says, I'll give you 300 cash today, say no thank you. In my case, I did put a price that was a little bit higher than what I actually wanted. So that's yet another thing you have to be aware of. Whatever you want to sell it for, mark the price up slightly from what you actually want. You have to do your due diligence and see how much it's actually worth before you start marketing up. Remember, just because you paid X amount of dollars doesn't mean that's what it's worth. And even though you may think that the depreciative value that you're adding to your product is fair, everybody's idea of fair is different. And I'm going to tell you another secret that has been said to me many, many times, and it's the bottom line. And that is your stuff, your personal stuff, the stuff that you want to sell, no matter what it is, your car down to a skateboard, no matter what you think it's worth, that item is only worth what somebody else is willing to pay for it. That's the bottom line and the hard truth. No matter what you think you should get out of something, it's only worth what somebody's willing to hand you. So remember that. And if you get 30 people telling you that they only want to pay $800 for something that you have $1,200 on or $1,000 on or $900 on, you might want to revisit and checking the value of the item to see if maybe you've got it priced too high. Maybe 800 is the going price because that's what they're telling you. Now the other thing you got to be cautious of is demographics. Don't get on eBay and look at what something sold for, the highest price that it sold for, and then put it on your local Craigslist and expect to get that out of it because there's a good chance that eBay, the item when it sold, it went to a different part of the country. If I go to this Walmart in town and try to buy things, and then take and go to New York City and try to compare those exact same things and how much they're being charged there, you're going to find a big difference in prices. So be aware of what it's selling for in your area. Don't use your research based solely off of eBay. eBay is a nationwide place to sell things. The entire nation should be looking at that and the entire nation is going to bid it up. The problem with eBay is, like everybody knows, you know, all the fees, the trouble of shipping, the PayPal, you know, them getting their cut, all that stuff just gets old. So a lot of people don't want to do eBay. They just like to sell it in person. And that's why Craigslist is so popular. Now to recap, again, take good pictures, good contact information, make sure that contact information validates your potential buyer so you don't have to deal with as much riffraff. And then research your pricing very well to know exactly what it should sell for. Price your item slightly higher than what you actually want and be ready to negotiate. Everybody wants a deal. Everybody wants to bring down that price a little bit. So let them bring down that price a little bit and that's done by you pricing a little bit higher. One of the things that people have a hard time with is they let this get emotional. They say, oh, this guy is trying to rip me off on purpose. I know that it's worth this much. I know that's what it should sell. It's not anything personal. Negotiating is something that gets done all the time 
and people have their own ideas about what they want to pay and what they can afford and what people are selling and what they want to sell it for. What you have to do is try to find a common ground between those two things. I have come down off of stuff many times to make the sale. Other people have come up to my price because they want to buy my item. There's always a middle ground. So try to find that middle ground. That's what negotiation is all about. The other thing that you may want to do is realize how much time you have invested in selling the item. Remember, your time is worth money. So you don't want to spend two years to sell something for $200 more than what you could have got two years ago. Because now you've wasted all that time storing the item, renewing ads, dealing with multiple people just to get an extra $200 out of it. And, and I'm just talking in general terms as far as dollar amount. Realize that at some point all your effort and time needs to pay off to get rid of that item. And I see a lot of people that would rather sit on something and keep it instead of sell it to somebody that was willing to pay them a little bit less than what they wanted. There's another thing that you have to remember. Why are you selling your stuff? What are you using that money for? Are you going to use that money to do something else? And the longer you have your items in your hand and not being sold, the longer that other thing, that something else, doesn't get done. So you've got double time going on. you got all the time that's involved trying to get rid of it for that extra 20 or 40 or $100 that you're trying to get out of this item of yours. And then you have all the time that's wasted that you aren't buying and dealing with your new thing or going and doing whatever it is you're wanting to do. So time is worth money. Remember that. Now as far as safety and all that, you should be an adult. You should know. Don't do things that sound shady. People coming to your house is scary. No big deal. Meet them somewhere else. Meet them at the local gas station. Meet them at the local Walmart. If you don't want somebody coming to your house, not a problem. You definitely want to make sure that you feel safe with the transactions. Make sure that there's people home. It's always a good idea. If there's more than one person at home, uh, at the time the person comes out and looks at your stuff, that's usually going to deter anybody that's out there for funny business. Now specifically for RV downsizing, this is the one thing that is the hardest. And it is part of the whole selling process, and that is not selling. Yep, not selling. If you've done your best, if you've priced something in the range in which you think it should sell, if you have had multiple people come out and look at it and just turn it down, if you have a lot of time invested, you've done really good pictures, you've followed all these steps, you've posted good descriptive verbiage on your ads, you have answered every phone call, you've tried to sell it on eBay, you tried to sell it in Craigslist, you tried to sell it in your local paper, you tried to post it up on your local family dollar board or the local auto parts store board or wherever the case may be and the thing still didn't sell, there's always donations. And the reason is, is I finally come to the conclusion that after all that effort that the only person that sees value in what I have is potentially just me. I didn't reach anybody else that sees the same type of value so at that point it's just time to give it up sometimes it's a good thing you know let it go to a new home and let it be enjoyed by somebody else because you're getting rid of it because you have now the need to go enjoy something else that's better than that better than having that item is experiencing something there's one other way that you can sell things and this I don't suggest but you can be successful with it if you don't have a high value in mind with the item and it's always good to check because sometimes you'll get more money than you expected and that's the pawn shops there's always local pawn shops that's looking to buy it's worth a try I mean if you have something that you've had for years and you're just like you know what I don't even know what it's worth bring it to a pawn shop I guarantee they're gonna research it on their computer and they're gonna give you a price that they can buy it at and still sell it and make money so it's worth a try because what they're willing to buy it at might be enough and it's out of your hair you get cash right then and you're done with it so it's something to definitely look at 
Well, the video is really long. I apologize, but I really wanted to cover everything that I really could think of right off the top of my head as far as selling items. And this is the way that I've been doing things for many years, starting back when I was 14 years old and I sold my first moped. From that point on, the lessons started to get learned, some of them kind of hard lessons. All those lessons over all those years made it to where I've learned that I can be pretty successful overall selling items. So take these steps for what they're worth. Remember, this is just the way I do it. Go ahead and put your own finishing touches on it or just ignore it all together. <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching my video and as always, I hope to see you out there. Bye.